the referendums in Ukraine. Now, basically, the, the, in a nutshell, people in eastern Ukraine are being asked whether they want to join Russia. They want to become part of the Russian Federation. Um, we're talking about specifically uh, four provinces. So we're talking about Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and uh, Kherson. Now, keep in mind, uh, in, in the Donbass, we have the uh, L People's Republics, right? The LPR and DPR that are being asked whether they want to join the Russian Federation. That's how the, qu the, the question is being worded. For Zaporizhia and Kherson, it's worded differently. They're asking them, would you like to become independent republics and subsequently join the Russian Federation? The result is the same. I just wanted to, to tell you about this nuance in the language. But the result is the same. Now, the response in the West is that this is a sham, right? I, I love this. Every time there's anything that involves voting in Syria or in Iran or in Venezuela or Russia, or it's always, it's always a sham and it's always undemocratic and it's always illegal before it's even taken place. It's, it's a foregone conclusion. Why bother even checking? Why bother even doing anything, right? Who, who needs to know? Why should I do this segment? I can just turn it off right now. Right? I'll just leave because it's just illegal. It's a foregone conclusion. I shouldn't even bother, right? <laughs> so let me, let me explain to you why these regions are being uh, asked to join. The, the, the answer is very simple. Let's look at the map here of the ethnic Russian population in Ukraine. Uh, Crimea, you, I mean, this is a census from 2001, which is still used as a, a guide, right? The majority of people living in Crimea are ethnic Russians, okay? Now, when it comes to the four regions we just talked about um, in uh, eastern Ukraine, it do, it's not a majority, but it's, it's a lot. I mean, look at, for example, 39%, uh, 38%. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. Uh, they show you here the contrast here. In Sevastopol, so this is the capital of Crimea, 71% of the population are Russian. In Kiev, on, uh, by contrast, only 13. But I think this should explain to you uh, some of the, the logic behind these referendums, right? The idea is that these people... Uh, feel neglected by their governments. They feel that the Ukrainian government has been bombing them and killing them for the last eight years because they're ethnic Russian and they feel closer to Russia than they do to Ukraine. And that's why they want to join the Russian Federation. That is the logic behind these referendums. Okay? So what is the Western press saying about this? Well, they definitely won't tell you what I just told you, but um, which is just a bunch of basic facts. But this is the, the narrative in the West. They're saying that with Kalashnikov rifles, Russia is driving the staged vote in Ukraine. Aha. Okay, so I've seen a couple of videos, basically, where they have someone coming up, like you'll have, uh, it was two women carrying a ballot box, and they're going door to door, and you have two Russians, uh, or people who appear to be Russian soldiers, um, accompany accompanying them. And so this is the proof, basically, that... You know, Russia is forcing people at, gun vo at gunpoint to vote in favor of Russia. Now, it's very confusing to me because when I was reading um, one of these articles, uh, they were interviewing someone who was asked um, to vote, and they voted no to joining the Russian Federation. And then this person was asked, well, what happened to you? I said, nothing. <laughs> I was, I was really confused. I was really confused about that. It's conflicting because on the one side, they tell you that the vote is illegal, even though people are coming out. And then on the other side, they tell you, actually, the people are being forced to vote at gunpoint, which is kind of what you hear with in Syria, right? They say that people are uh, uh, watched by the security services at the, at the voting uh, booth. At, at the polls and and someone looks over their shoulders and tells them how to vote it's almost like a caricature you know on the other hand let me explain something i understand the argument that most people th they say most people again i don't know how they collected this number but they say a lot of people have fled these regions because of the war yes that's likely it's very likely as a matter of fact so the the, the question is how do you conduct a truly democratic poll and referendum and you get people to go to the polls if they're not there, if they fled. Remember, you have like 7 million Ukrainians that are outside of Ukraine. You have a, a whole chunk more that are displaced inside Ukraine internally. And so uh, th that their argument is that you can't gauge properly 
whether these regions actually want to join Ukraine because they're occupied by Russian forces and people have left them because of the war. And then if you look at ABC News, they're saying that Luan's governor, uh, Serhii Haidai, was accusing uh, Russian officials of taking down the names of people who voted against joining Russia. What he means by taking down is that he said they were writing them in a list. You know, uh, that's what he's saying. And, and, and he was posting online that Russian officials were threatening to kick down doors of people who didn't vote. Um, other things that I've seen is that they're taking one vote per household. So instead of, you know, if you have four people in a household, instead of having four of them vote, if they're above 18, they would just take one vote per, uh, per household. Th these are the claims that I'm seeing. I don't know if they're true. That's the problem because it's so full of propaganda. Uh, it's so full of lies when they talk about elections in Iran, in Syria, which, which I know and I've reported about, that when I look at this, I'm also wondering, is, is, is this also bullshit? Probably is. It's the same people saying the same stuff as usual. So I can't gauge whether what they're saying is true. Um, you can't deny, however, that a good chunk of people there, uh, you know, they, they feel neglected by the Ukrainian government. They feel discriminated against. And yeah, they would probably vote in favor of it. Now, is it fair to have the vote when a lot of them are missing? For me, what really sticks out to me, I'm not, I'm not going to say whether, you know, uh, this is the right time to do the vote or whether these claims from ABC News and all these uh, other outlets are true. What I will tell you, however, with utmost certainty, what I can tell you with 100% confidence is that all these people denouncing the referendums in Ukraine are hypocrites of the highest order. They are the pinnacle of hypocrisy. History has not known any... History has known no one as hypocritical. And how do I know this? Let me show you Secretary of State Antony Blinken talking about what's happening in Ukraine, and then I'm going to show you another vi video of, of Blinken, okay? Here's what he had to say. For the UN Charter, for the General Assembly, and for this Council. The very international order that we have gathered here to uphold is being shredded before our eyes. We cannot, we will not allow President Putin to get away with it. Defending Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity is about much more than standing up for one nation's right to choose its own path. Fundamental as that right is. It's also about protecting an international order where no nation can redraw the borders of another by force. <laughs> if we fail to defend Listen to what he says next. Defend this principle. When the Kremlin is so flagrantly violating it, we send a message to aggressors everywhere that they can ignore it too. Yes, you do. For once, I agree with you, Mr. Blinken. This is Blinken when he just got the job as Secretary of State. And he was asked about the Golan Heights, which Israel illegally annexed from Syria. Which is what they're saying Russia is doing. They're saying Russia is illegally annexing the Donbass and these four regions, right? Israel illegally annexed the Golan Heights. And here's what Blinken had to say. The Trump administration, as you know, also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, which Israel captured from Syria back in 1967. Uh, will your administration, the Biden administration, continue to see the Golan Heights as part of Israel? Look, leaving aside the legalities uh, of, that, uh, of, of that question... As a practical matter, uh <laughs> look, man, stop bothering me with these legalities and international law. I don't care about that. The practicality of it. Well, there you have your answer. Mr. Blinken does not care about legalities, obviously, when it comes to annexing territory. So I'm really confused why he shows up at the U.N. this week and says that Russia uh, is violating international law and we have to protect international law. You, you said you don't care about it. You said leaving the legalities aside. What could be, what could be clearer than that? Th this is, these are the Golan Heights. This is what we're talking about, right? This whole area in yellow has been occupied by Israel since 1967. They illegally annexed it in the 1980s. And the Trump administration said, you know what? We are going to break with the rest of the planet, including previous U.S. administrations. And we're going to say that this is not Syria. This is actually Israel. We recognize this as Israel. And the Biden administration comes in and he's asked this question. Blinken has asked this question. Are you going to change back to what the whole world says, that this is Syria? He says, no, no, because we want to get rid of Assad. I'll play you the rest of the clip. Listen. The legalities uh, of that uh, of, of that question, as a practical matter, uh, the uh, the Golan is very important to uh, Israel's uh, security. As long as <laughs> Assad is in power in Syria, as long as uh, Iran is present 
uh, in Syria, uh, militia groups uh, backed by Iran. Look, man, the Donbass is really important to Russia's security. As long as NATO and, and uh, uh, other paramilitaries are present in Ukraine, it's got to stay Russian. That's how it is. <laughs> See, I, I can also play this game. Right. We can also play this game like Mr. Blinken. And he is right because he said that if we do this, if we allow this to happen, then other people are going to start copying it. Right. You allow one aggressor to redraw borders. Then you're basically sending a message to other aggressors to do the same. And that is what you have done. That is what America has done a hundred times over. And that is why Russia is doing what it's doing today. America has invaded other countries, redrawn their borders a million times. And that's why you have signaled to Russia that it is OK to do this. That's why no one respects you. That's why no one listens to what you're saying. That's why no one in the Kremlin gives a shit. Because when Washington does it, they get away with it. So who's to say the Kremlin can't get away with it? It's not, it's not even a question of Washington versus the Kremlin. Literally the same person. That's him. That's Blinken himself saying that it doesn't matter when Israel annexes other people's territory. And now he suddenly cares about Russia annexing other territory? What a load of drivel. What a load of drivel. Was that not the same man? One year apart? Ah, oh, the hypocrisy is, is staggering. I want to play you a clip by George Galloway. I think he has, he has some more hypocrisy to tell you about from the Americans. With absolutely no understanding of the word irony, Washington said today that it would not recognize the results of these referendums. Because to do so would be an offense against the national sovereignty of Ukraine. That you cannot have one part of a country decide to leave the state it's in and join another state or become an independent state. Did you hear them laughing in Belgrade about that? Did you hear the people of Serbia say, wait, what? Because we sliced a part of Serbia through a bogus referendum and immediately recognized something called Kosovo as an independent state. And Russia warned at the time that you are making a legal precedent that you might come later to regret. But of course, they don't regret it because most of them have forgotten that they did it. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. America has played this game a million times over, right? It's not just America, by the way. You can go back a hundred years. You can look at the French and the British and say, hmm, you know what? I'll take this piece of Syria. You can have this piece. I'll take that piece. Uh, maybe we can share this one. And now they, they, they're so offended by redrawing borders. <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen a map of Africa? Have you seen a map of the Middle East? They've just, they've literally like taken a ruler and drawn borders on a map. Like, just say, please. What am I supposed to say, man? What am I supposed to say with these hypocrites? They come here and want to give lectures. And, and, and you know, they, as soon as they get off the microphone, they're going and doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, man. There's one last thing I wanted to tell you regarding this uh uh this nuclear threat from from putin so a few days ago tw september 21st putin he he gives this this speech and he basically tells the west that if you don't back off and you threaten russian territorial integrity we have the nuclear option let me play the clip and then we'll analyze it которое примет большинство жителей Донецкой и Луганской народных республик, Запорожской и Херсонской областей, мы поддержим. В своей агрессивной антироссийской политике Запад перешел всякую грань. Мы постоянно слышим угрозы в адрес нашей страны, нашего народа. Некоторые безответственные политики на Западе не только говорят о планах по организации поставок в Украине дальнобойных наступательных вооружений, Систем, которые позволят наносить удары по Крыму, другим регионам России. Такие террористические удары, в том числе и с использованием западного оружия, уже наносятся по приграничным населенным пунктам Белгородской, Курской областей. В ход пошел и ядерный шантаж. Речь идет не только о поощряемых Западом 
обстрелах Запорожской атомной электростанции, что грозит атомной катастрофой, но и о высказываниях некоторых высокопоставленных представителей ведущих государств НАТО о возможности и допустимости применения против России оружия массового поражения, ядерного оружия. Тем, кто позволяет себе такие заявления в отношении России, хочу напомнить, что наша страна также располагает различными средствами поражения, а по отдельным компонентам и более современными, чем у стран НАТО. И при угрозе территориальной целостности нашей страны для защиты России и нашего народа мы, безусловно, используем все имеющиеся в нашем распоряжении средства. Это не блеф. А те, кто пытаются шантажировать нас ядерным оружием, должны знать, Putin is referring to the long-standing Russian policy, uh, which is public, of when they would use nuclear weapons, right? One of them, for example, is if the leadership of the Russian uh, government is targeted. Uh, another is Russian, you know, the very existence of Russia. And so, of course, the territory. And you have people saying, well, the reason he's trying to annex um, and do these referendums of Eastern Ukraine is so that these become Russian territory. And then he can say, well, because you are mounting attacks inside Donetsk, for example, you have threatened Russia's territorial integrity and therefore we are going to nuke you. It's a good theory. I haven't heard anyone um, uh, talking about nuclear weapons, though, except the West. Uh, the only country that's ever nuked someone is the United States. They, they, they nuked two Japanese cities to scare the Soviets. Not even because they had to. They did it as a show of force. Just to, like, just to understand how sick that is. Right? They, they literally atomized people, burnt them to a crisp to, to give the Russians a show of force. So if anyone's hot-headed with the red button, I think we know who it is. If the Russians wanted to use the nuke, they could have already done that uh, because of the economic warfare, because of all the... Anything else, they could have used any reason if they were really just looking to do a nuclear attack. I, I really... I don't even want to talk about this. This is such an outlandish possibility. I don't even want to think about this or contemplate this. Uh, I really, really hope it doesn't get that far. Um... Because if, if one country uses it, everyone's going down. This is game over for everyone. Forget about it. You know, it, it, will, it will make the winter coming. It will make the sanctions that are, you know, uh, uh, on Russia and the backlash from that look like a joke, right? This coming winter will be a joke compared to that. So let's, let's hope it doesn't get that far. But I think the, the, the most hypocritical of them all is Blinken. And, and, uh, and Biden, uh, you know, Biden came to the United Nations General Assembly and he said these words. He said, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot seize a nation's territory by force, right? He's referring to, of course, uh, everything that's, that's uh, taking place in terms of these referendums. Joe Biden saying this, right? I'll get you the clip, actually. Here, here you go. The United States wants this war to end on just terms, on terms we all signed up for that you cannot seize a nation's territory by force, that the only country standing in the way of that is Russia. This is Mr. Joe Biden, who has troops right now occupying about one third of Syria, the oil in Syria they're taking it to. This is Joe Biden, who has troops in Iraq, uh, who has very likely CIA still running around in Afghanistan. This is Joe Biden, who has 800 military bases under his watch. This is Joe Biden, who helped start the Iraq war. And now he cares about taking territory by force. What? I mean, th these jokes write themselves. I have nothing to add. <laughs> nothing to add.